just close your eyes for a while and think about moving from one place to the other. This is a story of Santosh Sapkota, who is visually impaired since his birth. But if you look at Kathmandu as a city, which is five times the population of Helsinki, with more than three million people, the vulnerability of travel extends to women, children, and normal people like you and me because of the chaos that you can see. The overpriced taxis and non-transparent public transport it's a huge challenge for people to move around. But within this chaos, you can also find the solutions. Look at the number of motorcycles that are there. 400,000. Therefore, we can utilize this spare capacity when people are moving around and provide a technology and an inclusive technology that can help people move from point to point. Now, for you, it might seem it's just an app uh, which creates a convenience of transport. But for us, it's about freedom of movement, freedom of mobility, because that is what is restricted to people like blind, disabled, and normal people like you and me in my country. So Tootle is about the freedom of mobility, and we are the tide of transformative technology that lead, dare, partner and inspire in the way people move with freedom. And we want to make that happen with dignity for everyone, because dignity to move around is a fundamental human right, whether you're disabled, whether you're abled, whether you're blind, whether you can, you can see, whether you're male or female, and that is what we do. But that's just the tip of an iceberg. In a country like ours, we have high rate of unemployment, and we want to solve that unemployment problem. There are 2,000 people that leave the country every day to work in the Middle East. We want to create jobs. More importantly, we want to put female bikers with a feature in the app that allows female to choose female only. We want to do it with an electric transport because we've already in the process of signing an agreement with an electric scooter company. And with the, in doing that, we've created 5,000 jobs where people can make an income of up to $20 a day in a country where people live in less than $2 a day. We have had 50,000 users and $43,000 in revenue. What we want here is partnership, is mentorship, is guidance, investment, funding that will allow us to scale up this impact and create more stories like Kumar Shrestha, who himself is an earthquake displaced. He didn't choose to go outside to Middle East. He didn't choose to work as a migrant worker, but stayed with us and he's helped his family, opened a store for his family, and now he's looking forward to working more with us and live ha a ha happy life in, my, in his own country and make things happen. Thank you. Thank you, Sixth Thank you. Let's see and hear what the jury has to say. Well, first of all, it was a really moving and touching uh, presentation, so thank you. Um, I'm very curious about the competitive landscape in the region because you have Gojek in other parts of Southeast Asia. Yeah. How would you actually learn from their accelerated growth yeah. uh, specified for Nepal? See, uh, if you look at Gojek, in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand, the culture of giving and taking rides is an existing behavior. They're bike taxis. In Nepal, we do not have something called dignity in labor. You know, people, parents wouldn't want their kids to go out and work in a restaurant or drive motorcycle taxis. So the difference between them and us is to create that dignity in labor, change that behavior, and put these young kids as a part of that economic change by having that dignity in, in labor. That is what we're trying to do. But we, of course, would want to learn different things from Gojek. There are so many similarities, but we have to put it up into, to, into our own context in Nepal and build it up further. But at a strap line, you're offering like a booking platform for motor bicycling taxis, right? Yes. And then how do you secure like safety? What, hap what if uh, an accident happens on that motorcycle that I was booking? Yes. Well, so what we've done is we've done a blanket insurance for all our rides. But more than that, we have a tracking feature. So we know exactly uh, who is taking a ride, who is gi giving a ride. And this is a question that comes to me every time in Nepal. You know, how is it safe? I tell them in Nepal, if you go inside a taxi with, a, with an unknown guy, you know, it's still as unsecured, but what we have is we have the details of those individuals who are taking the rides, and we have a real-time tracking. But on top of that, we are also having uh, the blanket insurance coverage, and we also induct and help 
our partners, the bikers, the motorcyclists, to uh, for safety. And probably in your country, it's not prohibited to 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 do mobile bicycling without a helmet. But I mean, how do you actually secure safety when all the passengers do not wear any helmets and any yes. clothing and protections? So we are planning to work with partners like UNDP uh, to work on road safety because the government has not done that. And we want to, because we have contacts with these 5,000 bikers who have registered with us, we can shape up their behavior the way we have shaped up their behavior in giving rides and making income. But that will happen as, next, as, as a part of the process. But we are engaging into road safety programs. Can you tell me a bit about uh, the team, why you have the right experience and will attract the right people to really make this great success? Exactly. Um, see, we started uh, in a plain canvas. I had a very young team. I myself don't code. But I started with a very young team, which is less than 25 years of age. I gave them time to learn, unlearn, make mistakes, fail. Uh, but not cloud their minds uh, as to what is happening with other applications. So we've built a platform from grounds up, from the very basic, and we're very proud of our team. We have created a product uh, that's liked by people, that's adored by the people, and the brand that's actually having a huge momentum in our country uh, and liked by youngsters. So that's what, I've, what we've done. I'm curious, going forward, what kind of skill set do you need to fuel your growth, whether that's with the team members, or like you said earlier, you need mentors, et cetera. So what are you looking for? We're looking, number one, uh, you know, we've solved a certain challenge. And right now we're doing up to 700 trips every day. But we need to develop a technology that can take us to 50,000 or 100,000 trips every day. And the skill set that would have taken us to 700 and the skill set that we require to go to 50,000 is different. So we want expertise. We want to learn from you as to how do we do the pricing in the long run. How do we make more income for our bikers? Of course, we have already engaged into uh, adding other verticals in terms of product delivery, food delivery, and logistics management. But we want to learn from those things, the psychology and the behavior as to how, can, how we can improve their livelihood by making more income. All right. Thank you so much, Sixi Bata, all the way from Nepal, Topo. Give it up.